Welcome back everyone to part two of this lesson where we learn how to write nuclear equations for beta decay, positron emission, and electron capture. We ended off with question number two when we're asked to predict whether each nuclide is more likely to decay via beta decay or positron emission. And this question is broken down into three parts, A, B, and C. Specifically in A, we have to write three nuclear equations to represent the nuclear decay sequence that begins with the alpha decay of uranium-235, so that's our first equation, followed by beta decay of the daughter nuclide, which we haven't found yet, and another alpha decay. So let's begin with the first of three. I've made some more room here, and we start off with uranium-235, that's the atomic mass. Its atomic number is 92, and you can find that on your periodic table. In an alpha decay, we lose an alpha particle, which is technically helium. So I'll write down helium, 4, 2. It has two protons and an atomic mass of 4. And to find out what the nuclide is for this first nuclear equation, we simply subtract 4 from 235. That's 231. And 2 from 90. That's 90. And on the periodic table, the 90th element is thorium. And its elemental symbol is Th. The next one is beta decay. So the nuclide here is thorium. We have 90, 231. And in a beta decay, the atomic number goes down by one. So rather than 90, it becomes 89. And the 89th element is actinium, as you can see on the periodic table. So I'll write down AC. Its atomic mass will remain the same, 231, plus and remember, during a beta decay, one of the neutrons in the nucleus suddenly changes into a proton, causing an increase in the atomic number, as you can see here. And we'll account for the difference between these two by writing down E, negative 1, and its mass is 0. Once again, there will be another alpha decay of this nuclide. So I'll write down AC, 89, 231. If there's an alpha decay, that's another helium atom. We subtract 2 from 89, that's 87, and 4 from 231, 227. The 87th element on the periodic table is francium, FR. That's the answer to question A. Let's move on to B. In question B, they want us to write the nuclear equation for the positron emission of Na22. So we have an atomic mass of 22 sodium, and it has 11 protons. In a positron emission, the nucleus of an atom releases a positron, which is an equivalent to an electron, but positive. So it's decaying, it's losing a proton, it becomes 10, the mass stays the way it is, and we represent the decay as E, positive 1, and its mass is 0. So remember what the main question is asking, predict whether each nuclide is more likely to decay via beta decay or positron emission. So at the very end, we're going to figure out if which of these is more likely to decay via one of these processes. So the next one, C, write the nuclear equation of electron capture of krypton, 76, and its atomic number, if I recall, is 36. Of course, you can confirm with a periodic table. In an electron capture, we are adding an electron to the atom. So an electron here, negative 1, 0. This yields, if we want to balance this out, 35. Notice that the atomic number decreases in an electron capture. We don't know what the nuclide is yet, but the 35th element is bromine, and the mass stays the way it is. So of this that and that, which is more likely to undergo beta decay or positron emission. For this, you want to remember the following. The isotope with the lowest neutron to proton ratio is most likely to undergo positron emission. So let's go ahead and start with francium. It has a mass of 227. 227. That's important because now we have n. We want to find the number of neutrons, so I'll just write down little n plus the amount of protons is 87. To find out what n is, we simply subtract 87 from 227, and we get 140. So we have 140 divided by 87, 
we're looking for the smallest number here. So I'll do this again for sodium and for bromine. So this one had 22 is equal to n plus 10. Subtracting 10 from 22, that's 12. So we have 12 divided by 10. We'll find that ratio soon. Bromine was 76 is equal to n plus 35. That's equal to 41. 41 divided by 35. Let's find out which one's the smallest. So I have 140 divided by 87. That's equal to 1.6. This one's equal to 12 divided by 10, 1.2. So far this is the smallest one. And 41 divided by 35 is 1.1. This is the smallest ratio, and because of that, it's most likely to undergo positron emission. And there you have it. That is how to write nuclear equations for beta decay, positron emission, and electron capture.